the devil can just step back and watch us destroy each other. Uh, but how many, how many up in here today believe that we still serve a God who, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that's working in us. And it's one thing to have the power in you, but if the power is not working, uh, we got some serious trouble in, in this world. And so uh, we are, the Bible says, we're the light of the world and that we are a city that's set upon a hill. We are to let our light shine. The Bible says we're the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith can it be salted? It's good for nothing but to be tossed out and trodden under the feet of men. It's up to us. Touch your neighbor. Say, it's up to us. If we don't do it, if we don't do it, this world that we live in is going to self-destruct. And so I just believe that uh, if the people of God will humble themselves and pray and seek God's face, uh, I believe that there, there can be a turnaround. Do I have any believers in this house? There can. I wish I had somebody up in here that would just talk to somebody that will talk back to you and tell them uh, there is a possibility that we can turn this thing around. Turn it around. Turn it around. And so as we prepare our hearts to pray for the world, I think sometimes we're focused so much upon what we're going through. I've never seen a time when more of the saints are complaining about what they are going through. Well, what I'm going through. They have totally forgotten all of the goodness of God. It's like you know, you can, you can do good to people and you can treat people nice and, and good and be there a hundred times. But if you miss one time, then you don't care. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody cares. They forgot you were there. Been there all year long. And one time, you dropped the ball, and now nobody cares. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Look at your name and say, shame on you if that's your attitude. You ought to be shame yourself. And that's how we treat God sometimes. If we don't answer us just when we want him to, it's like, Lord, you don't care about me. And we go into a pity party. Touch your name and say, this ain't about you. The Bible's already told you, except you deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. You cannot be my disciple. And don't think just because you're cute, you don't have a cross. Everybody, everybody got a cross. Touch your neighbor and say, everybody got a cross. But see, that's not the end of the story. Somebody picked it up and said, the cross is not greater than his grace. The storms cannot hide his blessed face. I am satisfied to know that with Jesus here below, touch your neighbor and say, I can, I can, I can conquer. Oh, I wish I had a believer in the house. Every foe. As Minister Baron Portier to come. I want us to continue to pray. And we will not stop praying. Sometimes, maybe some folks say, well, why do you keep calling your name? As long as there's breath in their body. I'm going to call their name. 
I want us to pray for Ruthie Bell Taylor. I want us to pray for Sister Margaret Taylor. I want us to pray for Deacon Willie Farrington. I want us to pray for, continue to pray for Evangelist Cassie Watkins. Uh, I'm glad to see Deacon. I think I saw Deacon Glenn Harris. I thought I saw him here. Oh, well, then he got a twin. Or I'm seeing something. Uh, but let's continue to pray for Deacon Glenn Harris, who had uh, surgery. Let's pray for him. And then Sister Arthur Lynn Peaches uh, is having surgery on tomorrow. And I just got a feeling that everything, she's up, she's up here. And then everything, look at Peaches, just point to Sister Peaches and tell her everything going to be all right. Everything going to be all right. And I just received word this morning in regards to my sister, my oldest sister, Shirley. Uh, who went back uh, into the hospital uh, and um, to have, she's had maybe about 12 or 15 uh, surgeries where they keep taking off more and more of her leg. And um, this one, this one is not, she's not doing well. Her, her body functions have kind of shut down. And so I'm going to catch a plane uh, in a few minutes and uh, I'm going to San Antonio. Hallelujah. God, this is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice and we'll be glad in it, God. We're rejoicing, hallelujah, because there's nothing that you've made, hallelujah, that you didn't make well, God. And if you made today well, God, we can count that all of our needs are met in this day. Hallelujah, that we're strengthened in this day. Hallelujah, that we're healed in this day. Hallelujah, that you're lifted in this day. That heaviness raises up in this day. God, hallelujah, we praise you today. We honor you today. We exalt you today. We extol you today because you're so good. Because you're so kind. Because you've been faithful. Because you've got all power. God, there's nobody like you. God, there's nobody beside you. God, you said to come to you. Hallelujah. With heavy hearts, Lord God. And God, you will lift it up. So God, we're putting it upon you, Lord Jesus. God, every single situation. God, every single home. Every single family. God, the sick and the shut-in, God. Everybody that's calling on your name today. God, we're sending you out, Lord God. Dispatch your angels, Lord God. Hallelujah to touch the heavy heart, Lord God. 
God, the, the, the weary mind, Lord God, hallelujah, give them peace in the name of Jesus. Touch their bodies, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And help us to remember, God, what you've been to us. Help us to remember, Lord God, and reflect on how you've always been there. How you never let us fall. But God, how you always held our hands and walked us through even the darker times, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, how you've taken us to the mountain. God, how you've taken us through the valley. God, you never left us. God, you never forsaken us. But lo, you've been with us always. So God, we praise you today. God, we lift you up today. Come on, open up your mouth and give it praise, give it praise, give it praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey God, hey God, hey God. And devil, we serve notice to you today. Hallelujah, you've got no more power. Hallelujah. We are a chosen people, a peculiar people. Hallelujah, and we're walking in power today. Hallelujah, we're walking in power to tread over the snakes and the scorpions that you've put in our path. Hallelujah, and because we're walking in God's power. Cancer has to dry up. Depression has to find peace. God, every sickness has to be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God, you heard the cries of your people. Meet the need, Jesus. Meet the need, Jesus. Meet the need, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, only you can do it. God, only you can do it. God, only you can do it. So we put our faith in you and we count it done in the name of Jesus. Come on, one more time. Open up your mouth and give him praise. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. He's got all power. And you can do anything. God, we bless you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just before you take your seats, turn to somebody and tell them, Leave I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, His praise, His praise. shall continually be in my mouth God bless you now let's let's con let's continue this week remember that we have a fast on Wednesday and a prayer and Bible class on uh, Wednesday evening as a you may be seated prayer at 7 and Bible study at 730 and then also, immediately after this service, uh, we will be hosting a ministry leadership appreciation dinner uh, and workers' conference immediately following this service. All ministry and their teams uh, are required to be there. If you're over in any ministry, you are required to be at the dinner because immediately after the dinner, uh, we're going to break out with our various groups and we're going to do uh, some planning for 2016. Now, because of that, we will not be have, having service tonight. We will have our communion service uh, this morning and there will not be any evening service on tonight. I want to thank uh, Tavian, uh, Pastor Tavian and, uh, and her staff for collaborating uh, with us to be a blessing has been so kind to uh, give us uh, enough toys and, and, and gifts uh, to uh, service around 1,500 children. Uh, and so we are going to, yes. Yeah. 
we're going to need um, some help uh, to do in order to do that, to get it done. And so uh, if you're willing to um, help volunteer, because some of us can't afford, we, we would love to be able to uh, just purchase gifts and, and give it to the children so that uh, our children can enjoy uh, Christmas just like everyone else. And uh, we, but we can't do that. We just don't have the resources. But we do have uh, the time, and and we're willing to to help uh, organize it and 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 do the giveaway because we're going to uh, reach out to the community uh, through K KHVN and some other media, letting them know that uh, these toys will be available. And if you saw anything like it was. Uh, Last year, when people were lined up in the cold, cold, and I think it was even raining, and they were lined up all the way back beyond the other building uh, to get uh, a help. Uh, if you're blessed and don't need no help, you ought to give God praise. Uh, but there's a lot of people who need a lot of help. And uh, so uh, what we need is just volunteers who will say, you know, whatever you need me to do, uh, we've got to go pick up the toys and unload the toys and then organize it and whatever you need me to do, um, I'm willing to do. And if you'll see uh, Brother Keith, I don't know if there's a way that you all set it up where out front where if you want to volunteer, you can sign up and, and volunteer. But we're going to need a lot of help if we have any way, anywhere near uh, the kind of uh, people that came on last year. So we would appreciate you uh, helping us. Now, I've got a three o'clock flight. I'm just going to go uh, run up to down to San Antonio and spend a little time with my sister and very little time, really, because the last flight back is uh, at 7.30 uh, this evening. And uh, so I'll have about an hour, hour and a half before I have to get back to the airport and come back here because I have some obligations on tomorrow uh, that I have to, uh, I feel obligated to, to, to do. And then on Tuesday, a lady and I are, and I are leaving for our annual vacation, uh, which is, uh, uh, I have some mixed emotions about uh, leaving at this particular time, but, uh, uh, I just know God is able to uh, to do what needs to be done, and so uh, we just solicit your your prayers. Um, so we're gonna move right quick, and I, I may have to to leave a little early. And if I do, then Pastor Hatcher will will close out the service because I'm gonna have to be at the airport no later than than about two o'clock uh, in order to catch the three o'clock flight. So we're gonna be moving from here on. We're gonna be moving really quick. All right, all right. No service tonight. But remember the dinner and the workshop uh, for all auxiliary leaders today. All right. At, we're happy for all of you that are here today and for the visitors who have come uh, to be a part of our service. We're just delighted and honored to have you here. At this time, we're going to move forward and we are going to worship Jesus Christ in giving of our tithe and our offerings. I wish I had a praiser now. I know that um, we have people in the house that that love to sit in the balcony, uh, and and if that's where you want to sit, then I ain't gonna bother you. But if you would, uh, it would be nice to come down here and fill up some of these uh, seats down here. The balcony is usually for overflow, and and we don't have an overflow crowd here this morning. Uh, and so uh, after the offering, if, if, if the Holy Spirit so speaks to you and, and, and tell you that I'm going down on the main floor uh, with my brothers and sisters, uh, I would appreciate it if you that are sitting in the balcony, uh, if it's not a major inconvenience for you. I know some of you have children and, and babies and you want to uh, sit up there if it's much more comfortable, but uh, I, can deal with the, I can deal with the babies 
uh, uh, down here. So it just be so nice. And I see some of the, our young people moving already. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? I see some of our young people moving already uh, to come down. And then today is first Sunday, first Sunday where we sow a dollar. We give a dollar outside of the, the four walls of this church, and we sow it into the um, we sow it into the um, Texas State Council. So as we come around with our tithe and with our offerings, uh, if you would be so kind to lay just one dollar on the altar as a seed sown into the Texas State Council, of which we are a major part of, um, I'm sure the Lord will bless us all and he will, as he has promised, supply all of our needs according to uh, his riches in glory. All right, it's time to stand as we go before the Lord and ask his blessings upon. Just take your tithe and offerings and lift them up. Our Father and our God, I'm so grateful for all that you are and for all that you do. I thank you and bless you and praise you for another day that you have kept us and, and allowed us to assemble back here in the house of the Lord. You are great and you're greatly to be praised. And when we think of your goodness and all you've done, we have to praise you. We have to thank you. You're precious, you're loving, you're kind, you're compassionate, you're, you're long-suffering, you're forgiving, and we thank you for it. Now, Father, as we come to show our appreciation and, and express our faith and obedience, bless gift and giver is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, the ushers will usher you out. Come, let's worship Jesus Christ in giving.
Holy Ghost in here. And touch somebody next to you and tell them over and over and over and over. He keeps on blessing me. How many of y'all believe that this morning? Well, slap somebody high five and tell them he keeps on blessing me.
Just look at your neighbor and say, it's all right now. The book of Isaiah chapter 40. Lord, I thank you. Done for me. Could have been me outdoors. No food. Just another number. Just want to say thank you. Oh. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy's down, people can't get enough pay. But as for me, all we can say. Jesus. <laughs> 
Jesus with no food and no clothes. Oh, just alone without a friend. Oh, just another number with a tragic end. Thank you, Lord, you did see fit to let none of these things be. Every day by your power, you keep on keeping me. And I want to say, oh, Let's go quickly. I don't have that much time. Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm going to kind of just pick out what I want to emphasize. I was going to read several verses here, but I just want to pick out. Uh, <laughs> gonna make me miss this plane but I've heard something up in here Isaiah if you don't stop I won't either so y'all take your seats I got about 15 minutes
could have been me Outdoors Now, I want you to take note of what this chapter says. And I may not even have to, I may have to come back later and preach this. Because I hate, I hate to rush this. But notice in Isaiah chapter 40. He says here, comfort ye. Comfort ye my people, saith your God. That is, ain't it? He says, speak comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her. Yeah, here's what I like. That your warfare is accomplished I wish I had somebody in here aren't you sick and tired of worrying over how things are going to turn out look what he says we are spiritual Jerusalem we're the church and he says he here that your warfare is accomplished. And some people may think, well, I'm imperfect. I'm, I've got so many shortcomings. I've got so many flaws. I know God is not going to do nothing for me because of what I've been involved in, what, what I've done. But he says here, not only is your warfare accomplished, but tell the church that her iniquity is pardoned. And tell the church that they ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Look at verse 4. Every, tell them, every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. Tell them the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. Tell them, in verse 5, for the mouth of the Lord have spoken it and if God spoke it verse 8 said let them know that every word of our God shall stand forever and that ought to make you shout because in verse 9 he says in the middle of verse 9 it says lift up your voice with strength lift it up and be not afraid. Why? In verse 10, because the Lord God is on his way. The Lord God will come, and when he comes, he's coming with a strong hand. I thought y'all be shouting by now. That's powerful. You may be seated. Give me about just a couple minutes I just want to talk about you know I love talking about God just something just goes all inside of me when I'm able or supposed to when I talk about God or when I hear about God so today for a few minutes I just believe it it is a fair statement when I say that far too many of us know 
very little about God as to who he is. We have some knowledge of what he does because to some extent we can see his face and his favor and the blessings that he bestows upon us from day to day. So then we know about what he does. But we don't really know who he is. We have read about him. And we have seen God in action. But we have not spent enough of our time with him. To really be able to say I know him. Today I would like to talk just a few minutes more about who he is than what he does because I just believe to know him is to love him the wonderful thing about him is big as he is as great and as powerful and as awesome as he is yet he is still accessible to all of us who desire to know him he has provided humankind with a revelation of himself through the natural world and through his son, Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. The Bible does not seek to prove his existence. It simply affirms his existence by declaring in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God. And although the full revelation of the fullness of God was in Christ, yet the human finite mod is not possible. And so it is interesting, however, to me that it never occurred to the Old Testament writers uh, to offer proof of the existence of God. Or that anyone should need any proof. There are some truths that are self-evident. Yes, and so the writers in Psalms 4, who has said in his heart, there is no God. So then all the books and religions In. It is in the word of God that we read here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He stands alone. He's singular. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There is one God and Father who is above all of us, through all of us, and in all of us, who are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. And whenever the child of God reflects upon conduct as moral, he recognizes that there can be only one moral and spiritual standard and authority. This hip hop culture and generation that we live in is neither the standard nor the authority of what are the principles of right and wrong behavior or the goodness or badness of human character but the Bible the Bible the Bible the Word of God is the ruler by which we measure what is right and what is wrong that's one of the reasons the Bible says beloved Believe not every spirit, but, but try the spirit to see whether or not it is of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Oh, aren't you glad you know the God of the Bible? And although his abstract 
being and his metaphysical attributes uh, are not defined in the Bible, uh, yet they are certainly implied. Uh, the essence of his infinity, uh, his omnipotence, his omniscience, and his omnipresence are, are not necessarily enunciated in terminology uh, because there are no uh, monolingual or bilingual dictionaries. There are no lexis. Uh, there is no lexis or lexicon whose vocabulary and nomenclature can accurately and completely express all of the who-ness of God. Understand that God cannot be classified. God cannot be codified. You cannot reduce God or arrange him into some systematic collection. He's too big to fit in with anyone else. He has already told us that heaven is my father. Yeah, who would acknowledge with me that our God is magnificent. Our God and our God is marvelous. I'm almost through. Talking about the son of David. I'm talking about the seed of Abraham. Out of and I'm talking about the meek and the humble lamb. He's omnipotent, omniscient, he's omnipresent. Somebody said he's bread when I'm hungry. He's water when I'm thirsty. He's a shelter in the time of storm. He's my friend that sticks closer than a brother. So I just stopped by the chosen vessel today uh, to tell somebody what you are going through uh, is not too big for your God. Uh, and before you walk out the doors of this sanctuary, uh, if you can believe uh, that no weapon uh, formed against you can prosper. Uh, if you can believe that every tongue that rises against you in the judgment you shall condemn. Uh, if you believe that this is the heritage of the service of the Lord and your righteousness is of God, then I'm here to tell somebody your warfare is accomplish uh, if you can believe today uh, that no weapon formed against you uh, can prosper your warfare is accomplished uh, if you can believe that God uh, is on your side uh, then your warfare is accomplished uh, so as I close this little message uh, I celebrate uh, the awesome God who brought me up uh, and out of the miry clay uh, and set my feet on a rock to stay. Uh, I have seen his love. Uh, I have seen his compassion. And what I have seen has convinced me uh, that he still can do uh, what no other power can do. Uh, so I'm encouraged today uh, and I'm encouraged somebody else up in here uh, to keep the faith. Uh, that's how we live. Uh, that's how we roll. Uh, the just shall live by faith. Uh, we don't walk by sight. Uh, we walk by faith. Uh, so I'm here to tell somebody uh, remember who it is uh, that's on your side uh, he's the one who told you uh, your warfare is accomplished uh, your iniquity is pardoned uh, I have succeeded uh, in bringing you out of darkness uh, into a marvelous light uh, I have brought it about uh, when the enemy said it wasn't going to happen uh, I completed your salvation uh, your miracle is completed. Your breakthrough is completed. I fulfilled every need you have up in your life. And all I need you to do is give me a praise up in this house. He's the one, he's the one who told you that every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. God 
is the one who told you to lift up your voice with strength. Don't play with the praise. Give God a praise that is meaningful. Give God a praise that has substance. Give God a praise that has conviction. Give God a praise that convinces the devil he's got to get off your back. Somebody up in here ought to give God a praise from the bottom of your heart because he's the one who said lift up your voice with strength lift it up and be not afraid and so God told me to tell somebody up in here it's time now to lift up your spirit lift up your voice lift up your praise lift up your head whoa ye gates and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors and these doors are too big to open these doors must be lifted these are semi truck warehouse doors look at your neighbor and say neighbor these doors are these doors are semi truck warehouse doors oh how fine and tell them I need, I need a warehouse and say neither the store was coming to the Lord the windows of heaven are opening they are unloading. They are unloading my forgiveness. At somebody next to you. Neighbor. Miracles. It's a breakthrough. I'm doing it. Who's about because I realized God's about to turn some things around. What the devil meant to curse me, God has reversed the curse. And I'm getting ready to be blessed like I've never been blessed before. Do I have anybody up in here who believes that you are on the verge of your breakthrough? You have survived it. The devil attacks your mind. The devil tried to kill you. The devil tried to destroy your faith. But touch him and say, neighbor, I'm still standing. I'm still here. And I still have a praise in spite of the hell I've been going through. Do I have a praiser up in the house that will praise God? Because you realize you ain't over until God says it's over. And your blessing is just beginning to happen. If you believe that, give God a praise up in here. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I get joy just thinking about what God's getting ready to do up in my life. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus, he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. Somebody up in here ought to clap your hands and give God a praise because you know the God who is on your side. You've seen him work. You've seen him move. You've seen him turn some things around. And now you peeped into your future and you know that your future looks better than your past. Touch your neighbors and neighbors. Neighbor, do you see what I see? Come on and grab somebody by the hand and say, Neighbor, I 
I ain't got nobody up in here who will cry with me. Look at somebody next to you and say, neighbor, do you see what I see? I see a breakthrough. I see my miracle. Put on, put on your spiritual glasses because something good is coming your way. Something you've been waiting on. Something you've been praying about. Something you've been fasting for is about to happen. somebody shake their hand shake it like you're gonna take it and say neighbor I wish you could see it I wish you could feel it something good Three people, I can see it. I can see it.